Wake up, Lo-Fi Nation. It's another Good News Friday. And welcome, everyone, to the Lo-Fi poli Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Lo-Fi is in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be, global news show. And here we got that famous question, what's going on in the world today? But today... Oh, it's everyone's favorite day of the week. That's right, it's another Good News Friday. Fresh off that press, coming at us, source AP Oddity section. Bear has close call on utility poles in Arizona border city. And this one is truly an oddity. Check out the pictures, people. This good-sized bear, at least what it appears to be, climbed up some telephone poles and decided to chill out for a bit in Douglas, Arizona, right in the downtown area. And I know you're wondering, The bear was unharmed. They didn't tranquilize it or anything else. It came down on its own when it was ready. Our guest bear, well, what did they do? Just kind of sat there, chilled, looked out around the town, maybe was seeing what's going on, checking out for some food. Who knows? We're just happy the bear is safe and sound. Next up, source, Reuters Lifestyle Section. Russia picks cast for movie to be shot in space. Oh, really now? Shooting movies in space, are we? Sure, let's go with that. The story. If you heard rumors that Tom Cruise was going to shoot the next Mission Impossible 72 in space, or that Vin Diesel was going to shoot Fast and the Furious 27 in space, well, Russia said, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, not before us. You see, four Russian actors, directors, camera people, this October, are being sent up to the International Space Station. To start filming. And if you're thinking, isn't the space station kind of small? Isn't there limited room and resources up there? Isn't there, I don't know, more important shit to be doing on the International Space Station? Oh, come on! This is as ridiculous as it is cool. Look, I'm down with space movies, though I won't tell you which ones, but I will say not all of them. But surely, surely we have, well, never mind. You feel me. Now, moving forward, because we never move on from anything. Source, NPR, shortwave. Scoop, there's a dirt shortage. Wait, say what? Really now? A shortage of dirt. This I gotta hear. So the short version, because this is from the shortwave section, sea levels are rising, and coastal communities everywhere are trying to shore up their coastal erosion plans and levee systems. And as a byproduct of this, the demand for dirt has now risen above the supply for dirt. Craziness. I wonder how much dirt is going for these days. How much has the price really risen? You know, supply and demand? Maybe I should invest in dirt. I mean, come on, really. This is this is crazy. A dirt shortage? I dig it. Though not really. A weird double entendre. But I couldn't help myself. The following story comes from the science section of the AP. NASA. Spacecraft begins two-year trip home with asteroid rubble. Space rock coming home, I dig this too. So you see, we sent Osiris Rex, a spacecraft, to the Bono asteroid years ago. And it's been circling the asteroid since 2018. Finally, it picked up about two pounds of asteroid rock from the surface. And on Monday, it left the asteroid homeward bound. A trip that will take two years for Osiris Rex before it reaches back the Earth. All right, aside from getting to see some cool space rock... Can we talk about the fact that it's going to take two years for that ship to get back? I mean, we like to think we humans down here on Earth are so advanced. But when we go up there, to space, we are merely infants playing in a sandbox. Two years, we'll be waiting, Osiris Rex. Oh, and P.S. Who gave the combo name of a Roman, Latin, and Egyptian to this spacecraft? I mean, interesting choice, as... Osiris is the Egyptian god of the underworld, and Rex is Roman Latin for king. So this spacecraft that is bringing back asteroid rock is called King God of the Underworld. Well, that's not a creepy name at all for a ship bringing back unknown materials from outer space. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the weekend, the UK section of the BBC. Hedgehog study to assess danger of robot lawnmowers. So many questions here. I know. And we got them all for you. So first, who in the UK decided that this research was needed? Answer, the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. And yes, that's a real thing. And guess what? I think it's a wonderful thing. Hedgehogs are majestic and beautiful creatures. Second, what's a robot lawnmower? 
Ah, uh, I knew you'd ask this, because in the U.S. they aren't that popular. But in the U.K., apparently, they are. Think of a traditional push lawnmower, but with no handles for you to hold onto, and just the base part. And that's it. Third, do people really use robot mowers that much to cause fear of damaging hedgehogs? Answer, apparently they are going up in popularity in the UK, for sure. And hedgehog populations have declined by 50% since the year 2000. Now, of course, this simply could be correlation and not causation. Enter the British Hedgehog Preservation Society, because they need to know if these robo-mowers are to blame. Third, on who the hell agreed to do this study, and how are they going to find this out without hurting more hedgehogs? Answer, the University of Oxford, and by using dead hedgehogs collected from rescue centers and analyzing the injuries inflicted. So yes, this means someone from Oxford is putting dead hedgehogs on the ground and running them over with robo-mowers because the British Hedgehog Preservation Society must know if they represent a danger to hedgehogs and their declining population. And finally, you're wondering, well, what did they find out? Answer? Begin quote. Smaller mowers, those with retractable blades and front-wheel drive, those models were safer. End quote. And now you know. So if you're concerned about hedgehog populations in your area, do your part today and get those smaller mowers with retractable blades and front-wheel drives and save those hedgehogs for the future. And that's it. I'm out for the weekend, but you know how to get at me. Always remember that lo-fi poli size is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off, but not out.